right, so this will be my third one of these since uh, starting this. This is the uh, notepad that was graciously donated to me uh, to the channel by uh, the fellows over the, uh, the Cleveland Battle Mech, uh, Battletech uh, Club. Uh, I'm sorry I'm burning your name. Uh, you know, I, I know it, but I'm not. And not remember the exact formula for it. But anyway, it was a gracious donation along with that laptop. I have to yet, have yet to get up and run, and that is my goal to get that fixed and up and set up this week so I can figure out how to do better videos. Uh, you can see the previous one I did with my old laptop. Very choppy, has its issues. It keeps, uh, I don't know what's going on there. And there was a reason I retired that laptop. And the one I got that I've been using for the last couple of years, well, as you know, the, the volume sound on it, something's going wonky on the speaker side. Because I can hear things pretty good on it as a normal laptop use. But, you know, as you, as a handful of videos I've done, and like I said, I've got four, four or so, maybe five videos that I did with that old one that are still sitting in there. Well, you know, we got some issues. Uh, lately, I've been watching a bunch of videos uh, on various uh, uh, YouTube channels regarding uh, WOTC, the Wizards of the Coast, and uh, a lot of the stuff that they and, Fra and Hasbro appear to be doing to push their brand. And uh, they have done some really questionable crap the last couple of years. And uh, of course, 5, uh, 5e, 5th edition, they, they put a rubber stamp on it, it's finished and are now pushing their one D&D &D, uh, uh, line. And I, I'm not buying it. I, I'm just not buying into it. I, I, you know, I'll be picking up some of this fifth edition stuff as it comes up uh, half price and when I can get it, just to have it. But I've got more than enough of the 3.5. The thing that bugs me the most about Wizards of the Coast, it's kind of like the people at Catalyst. People at Catalyst understand, because some of them actually were at FASA back in the day. So they understand why facet fell apart, went under. They understand it better than we do. Well, the people at Wizards of the Coast apparently don't listen to, or don't read their own history, their own, their own company history per se, or, or their uh, the product line's history. Because if you know anything about TSR, uh, tactical, strategic, something or another, was it? Uh, oh, I used to know it anyway, TSR, really kind of screwed the bulldog more of itself but toward the end there what they started doing was is they, they started to do what watsi's doing you know they started crapping all over their independent uh, creators they stopped paying a bunch of them they actually drove out some of their best talent uh ed greenland left fairly early on but you know, uh, michael stackpole is one of the most prolific most talented writers they had for novels and stories and they ran him out. He just got fed up with the BS and they didn't want to pay. They just stopped wanting to pay because they didn't have the money. They kept robbing Paul to pay Peter. This is an old story. The, the format maybe never changes or is different, does change. But if you go back to the original Star Wars, uh, the D6 version was produced by West End Games. Same problem. Toward the very end there, West End Games got into financial uh, straits and issues. And they were literally robbing Paul to pay Peter to try to keep putting new product on the shelves. And eventually they lost the license to the d, &D or to the Star Wars uh, uh, game, or the rights to Star Wars. So they lost their license. And, uh, I, you know, I understand that Watsi picked it out because under the D20 system, and, or D20 system rolling or whatever it was, at least I think it was Watsi. I've got a couple of the D20 uh, core books for Star Wars. But uh, the same issue with the, what they've been pulling Hasbro is pushing this thing about the brand. They want to sell the brand. They don't give a damn about the pen and paper part of the game. You know, if you go back to being a Star Wars fan, I've been a diehard Star Wars fan since I was, since 1977. I could, all I could ever dream of is be, be Han Solo. I always wanted to be Indiana Jones. I always wanted to be Han Solo. And, and uh, you know, this lasted up until the you know, last 10 years or so. And I started seeing a horrific material coming out and I'm like oh my god what the hell did you what did Disney do I thought Disney would be a great addition to Star Wars and they would do great things they could pick up where Lucas was you know where Lucas wanted to leave off and run forward with it they went off into such tangents that it was retarded and it just became pointedly obvious that those in charge specifically that uh, Miss Kennedy uh, you know doesn't give a whole lot of crap about the fan base he me you most of us you know, the, the old school established fan base. So in Watsy, some of the crap that Hasbro's having Watsy do, 
you know, they've laid off a whole bunch of their creative talent. They, they, they're restructuring other stuff. They're pushing more of their virtual tabletop than anything else, in part because they can, they can really grab, it's a money grab. They can really push more money. One of the downsides for a lot of games today, and it has been since early on, is just who buys the material. You know, think about that, for, for example. Dungeons and Dragons being the big world, that's one I keep going back to, because but there's this holds true a lot of systems. The majority of the material purchased are purchased by a small block of people. So whoever wants to be the game master or the dungeon master or the sterile story teller or whatever has the tendency to buy the most material. So if you have a say a table of five people and one of them is the GM, if you go to the, each person's house, the more likely or not, you're gonna find most of the players have a handful of books, the core books, mostly the you know the, the, the player manuals, monster manuals, that kind of crap. But they don't have a bookcase after bookcase of stuff. You only have to look in my room, this you know, my living room and see I've got several bookcases loaded with stuff and I got stacks more all over the place because I don't have enough books book uh, books uh, bookcase space to hold all of it. Right? And, and so when you look at who actually buys the material, crapping all over those people is kind of a bad business model. But what do I know? I mean, honestly, what do I know? See, it's like this, this little, this little uh, device here, this, this pad. I, it's the first time I've ever owned a pad that's functional. I mean, I got one at home and I never quite figured out how to get it to work. This one here was a little more intuitive. And I don't know what the limits are for recording videos on it. Because I know on my phone, I'd already be maxed out by five minutes. I can do very short videos uh, on my phone unless it's a live uplink to like Facebook. Because I got four point something on my phone and these be five point something. So by rights, I suppose this tablet could be wired up to the internet and I could do live videos using this. But I don't have the funds to support yet another device. My phone is it. And I'm not sure I want to try tethering this thing to that phone and, and of course that based on minutes and you know uh, X amount of I don't know how how are they figure that X amount of, X amount of X per month kind of stuff for twenty dollars extra, you know, whatever it goes. So part of the deal is that I, I was was uh, I wanna say it was this uh, Harmony Ginger was interviewing uh, Dungeons and uh, uh, Dungeons and Discussions. This gal uh, does her own channel. And she really tears into Watsi a lot. She has a lot of opinions on it. And one of the things, first off, that really, I'm really not, it's a pleasant thing to see, are to see uh, women in this hobby really step it up. Twenty years ago, you hardly ever seen any of them. I'm, I'm not just saying. I'm, I'm not trying to be a male chauvinist here. I'm just being real. You go back 40 years when I was a kid, girls playing was almost unheard of, very unheard of, and very, uh, sadly, very discouraged by a lot of us because we were young and you know young and stupid. And, and then uh, to go back 20 years, well, they were showing up the games at the conventions. They were sitting down at the tables. Some were even starting to run campaigns and stuff. But it wasn't right now. It's an equal opportunity. And I think it's awesome. It's great. And the material these these ladies are putting out is excellent material. It's good stuff. I recommend highly to go you know, visit their websites. The uh, topic was, is, or one of the comments I got into a discussion with another person on the comments section, was that Watsy is going to, you know, Watsy could end up burying itself. Hasbro could end up ruining Dungeons and Dragons until eventually they get tired of it and they sell that part of the franchise off and somebody else brings it back to life. I expect it to keep cranking along, keep cranking along. But if they keep pushing this idea of getting away from the pen and paper book stuff, it's it's what most of us want to do. We want to sit at the table and role play. It's like this argument about having uh, the AI take over. We're, we're going to have AI uh, game masters, and we won't need the actual game master. Well, from a product perspective, that's kind of a stupid thing to do for these companies. I mean, I'm just being a practical, honest person when it comes to that. Just saying that's probably really, really stupid. Uh, the other side of that would be that uh, I don't know that AI could ever pick up on the human factor. There's such a thing as social interactions that are very subtle and uh, sometimes very nuanced that machines can't duplicate yet. To say they won't eventually, that, you know, I, I believe that eventually they will, but not to the degree that a human person could do. I just don't see that happen. But what I was trying to get across in the comments section on our video was that 
you know, Dungeons and Dragons is not it is not all that there is anymore. I mean, Pathfinder put a put paid stamp on that. I mean, it's so many people, you know, went after pa a Pathfinder. What it amazes me, like JCD, where I went and got my a couple of those used books the other day, they have a whole box of Pathfinder material there. Now, I never got into Pathfinder, and, and I'm not going to start now. But I mean, there's a lot of used stuff there that's available, a lot more than D&D stuff. And then we go, and I look at the independents, and this fella was going, oh, like the ind indies, the independents are ever going to do anything. Well, I beg to differ. Once again, like I said, I'm 58. I was, I was 11, 10, 9 or 10 when I first started. You, and we were bar, or we were sneaking uh, my best friend Richie's uh, brother's uh, white box set back, or white books back in the day, and then his red box set until we bought our own. And, uh, there was only a handful in the, uh, of game companies back then, in the late 70s, early 80s. By the 90s, we've seen that quadruple. There was quite a few more companies out there, a lot more product and different kind of genres and stuff. But we we're also seeing, starting to see some competitions, Rollmaster, GURPS, things like that for Dungeons and & Dragons. And while it didn't have the, the muscle that TSR was able to throw at things, they were still stuck around. In some cases, they still can be found today. We leap forward another decade or two, and what do we see? Dozens and dozens of, of independent companies with quite a lot of uh, uh, product coming out. Now we move forward into the modern age with the internet and Kickstarter and all the other advantages. Yeah, see, I need to figure out how far I can hold this thing away from my face. This is kind of weird. Uh, the thing to consider, right? Have you, have you ever heard of Bloat Games? Eric Bloat. This is a fellow that started his own game created it, then he made his own game company using Kickstarter, goes to conventions to sell his products, got a number of product lines going. This kid, this guy is living a lot of our a lot of our dreams. We, a lot of us would dream to be in his spot. He's actually made it happen and good for him. But how many people have heard of this game system? I know Eric Blo uh, Bloat from uh, casual conversations on a, a Facebook channel, but I, I don't own it. Uh, I own one of his products and that was only because it was free. Right, uh, it's not because I wouldn't want to buy his stuff. You know, see, deities and demi gorgon, demi deities and demi gorgons. You know, Google it. You'll find it on uh, on, on Amazon and crap like that. The uh, other company is called Gooey Cube. Gooey Cube is producing a lot of Dungeons Dragons friendly product. Uh, I know another fellow who's associated with them. That's we're doing some writing for him. He he talks highly of their stuff. I don't own any of their stuff. Uh, they, they've got a a, a city a city uh, supplement that came out, or they're putting out, that looks gorgeous. It looks beautiful. It it's rivals the old Judges Killed material, but in more modern format. The only problem for me is it's ninety five dollars for the for the PDF version, and like a hundred and something to get the physical item and a PDF. And I'm like, I don't got ninety five dollars. I, I had ninety five dollars. I bought. I went out and I bought five books. I got two used and, and three new ones off the Amazon for about 95 bucks. And that's my game, that's pretty much my game uh, budget probably for the rest of the damn summer. Unless I get dumb lucky or I find something I just absolutely cannot pass on, you know, that that's the truth. Uh, recently, one of, one of you guys graciously donated a PDF version of the latest uh, shrapnel. Uh, and I'm looking forward to reading it. I still have to get a PDF reader on this thing here, and I'm utterly paranoid I'm going to drop it. You know, I really am, and I'd be, I would be horrified to do that. I need to get a case for this thing. So anyway, this thing's running into 15, 14 minutes. That's good. That's good. We'll see how this translates on the channel. Bear with me, guys. We'll get through this, and things will get back to somewhat normal soon. Although I hope to be able to add additional stuff and content like I'm out here in the field. I mean, it really would help uh, me anyway, because I have a lot of time. Like right now, this truck's just, it might take an hour to fill the tank again, it may take two hours. Because I'm hoping to get to the bottom of this end, and then I move up to the second manhole, and if I can get that, then I'll be into the first, you know, so the first 5,000 be bumped out and I'll be starting on the second. Uh, it doesn't matter, I gotta drag this, this crap out until about 7 a.m. before I go hang out at Gersha. Uh, so, you know, hey, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for putting up with the weirdness of this stuff. And for me, it's all a learning curve.